Hi everyone and welcome to July's edition of Azure Updates. As always, I just want to stress that all content is publicly available on the web and this recording is simply a collation of these resources presented in an easily viewable format. If you have any questions or feedback, then please feel free to drop me a message or a tweet because I'm always happy to hear from you. This month, I'm recording from our corporate headquarters in Seattle. So I've decided to theme the video with images from around campus. Now, I don't want to go too far off topic, but I'm often asked what it's like, so I've decided to list a couple of impressive facts. Firstly, the campus is huge. It's difficult to appreciate the scale until you're standing here. I mean, it's practically its own little community covering over 8 million square feet and home to more than 50,000 employees. We have our own shopping mall that's host to numerous restaurants, banks and retail outlets, and even our own football field library and studios. To get around, we have our own campus shuttle bus and cab services, which will take you between any of the 115 multi-storey buildings. And in special circumstances, guests are able to view the visioning centre and experience the home of the future and emerging technologies. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed a selection of images as we discuss this month's news. We start off this month with the news of a new update for the StoreSimple Virtual Array appliances, bringing improved resiliency for cloud outages. This includes several bug fixes around disaster recovery, backup, restore and tiering in the event of cloud connectivity disruption. Improved restore performance with bug fixes that have significantly cut down the completion time of the restore jobs. Automated space reclamation optimization with improved reclamation processes, meaning that unused space becomes available faster when compared to previous versions. We have support for new virtual disk images, including VHD, VHDX, and VMDK. Improved accuracy of job statuses in the Azure portal. And finally, improved domain join experiences with fixes related to domain joining and renaming of the virtual array. It's important to note that this is a disruptive update and will require a reboot of the virtual appliance, so it should be applied during planned downtime. Also this month, Visual Studio Team Services gets the general release of the Dev Test Lab extension, allowing you to easily integrate your build and development pipeline directly into your cloud testing environments. What's more, the extension allows you to provision golden images to quickly create virtual machines in the lab with the latest build of your applications already installed. This saves time during redeployments, allowing you to quickly get started with testing before migrating to production. Over the past few months, we've consistently heard from customers and service providers that they see tremendous business value in the hybrid capabilities of Azure and Azure Stack. We've also heard a universal theme around infrastructure whereby customers don't want to deal with the complex deployments and operations. For us, these learnings reinforce the need to make Azure Stack easy to manage as we translate global scale Azure infrastructure designs to enterprise scale environments. We know that customers want an end-to-end -end solution with Azure consistent services as they become available and to stay up to date with the latest innovation. Because of this, customers are often willing to trade off customization at the infrastructure layer to gain a faster time to value. To best meet these requirements, we will prioritize delivering Azure Stack as a turnkey integrated system with the initial general availability release, combining software, hardware, support and services in one solution. This predictability of system infrastructure will enable Microsoft to more rapidly deliver innovation from Azure to Azure Stack and help simplify the operational experience for customers, enabling a solution that accelerates the delivery of business critical services. After gathering valuable feedback from the private preview, we're excited to announce the release of the Azure Media OCR media process of a public preview. Video OCR, or Optical Character Recognition, is the conversion of visual text from a video into editable, searchable digital text. This allows you to automate the extraction of meaningful metadata from a video signal of your media. When used in conjunction with a search engine, you can easily index your media by text and enhance the discoverability of your content. This has proved to be extremely useful in video recordings of screen captures or slideshow presentations. Continuing with the topic, two months ago we announced a public preview of motion detection on Azure Media Services. 
With its early adoption success, we are releasing an update that adds a number of new features to the service. This includes improved accuracy, sensitivity adjustments, multiple polygonal detection zones, and event merging. These changes make it easier to decrease false positives by limiting motion detection to a specific entryway or by changing the sensitivity levels to match the specific use cases. In essence, it makes it even easier to supplement security cameras which may already have naive motion detection with a second pass in the Microsoft Cloud which filters out the real motion from a myriad of false alarms. In other news, we're happy to announce that we've just released a new high availability checklist to help you increase the resiliency and availability of your applications in Azure. While Azure gives you great tools and services to help increase your availability, we often notice that companies are perhaps unaware of these tools and as such fail to take full advantage. It's important to note that Azure Resiliency is a shared responsibility model and as a result we have created this checklist to provide common ways to increase your application's availability using best practices, tools and techniques. These suggestions come from both good design patterns as well as the experience of our architects who work with customers building solutions on Azure on a daily basis. Common questions that we often hear from customers are, what will happen if I don't follow this suggestion? And what are the implications? So in this guide, we have listed not only the technologies, but also the rationale on why they are necessary. We hope that this helps you achieve your goal of making better decisions on the design of your Azure applications, as well as understanding any particular trade-offs that you might decide to make. Also this month, we're announcing the general availability of platform managed infrastructure as a service migration from Classic to ARM. This supports all previously introduced preview features in addition to the general availability of storage account migration. With this release, it's possible to migrate the most common virtual machine deployments in an existing Classic virtual network to Azure Resource Manager without virtual machine downtime. Classic virtual machines which are not part of a classic virtual network will undergo a single reboot operation when migrated across. Finally this month, I'm very happy to announce the release of the Azure Usage and Billing Portal, providing a convenient way to review and visualize usage and billing information across multiple subscriptions. Once deployed, you'll be able to register any subscriptions that are used by your organization so that their usage will be polled on a daily basis. From there, that usage and build amount is displayed in an easy to use and very configurable Power BI dashboard. This release is just the start of what we're hoping to accomplish with this project. In the future, we plan to add the ability to trigger alerts based off unusual Azure usage, provide additional reporting, enable per subscription rate codes, simplify deployment, and much, much more. So another big bump for the cloud with lots of innovation and collaboration. If you're interested in beginning your own cloud journey or building on top of the systems already in place, then I would encourage you to take my free step-by-step -step training at www.cloudandproud.info. Working together and over the course of a number of interactive sessions, we will build a working company and explore many of the new features offered by the Microsoft Cloud. This will in turn prepare you for certification and build confidence in what you're able to achieve. I thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you on our next monthly update.